Hi, my name's Phil. I'd like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the government's attempt to fiddle the economic data to not only get a uh, PR base from a reduced level of inflation, but to, on a more practical level, avoid higher charges on their debt. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. Uh, so the, the, the current government plans to deal with the surge in the cost of energy this autumn involved a £400 grant being payable to households, uh, with some extra bits as well. It was originally going to be a loan of half the size. So it was originally going to be £200 off your bills, but then you'll pay it back over the next few years. So you get higher bills over the next few years. Then people said, well, this is just a loan. This is like an interest-free loan. This isn't helping. And the government, no, 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 it's not. It's like, do we have to pay it back? Yeah, then it's a loan. But then they changed it because the forecast for the uh, price rises this autumn got a lot larger. So the government had to double it and say, okay, you don't have to pay it back. So it's now a grant. We can agree it's a grant, you know. Um, and it's not, so it's not going to be repayable. But it's also not going to be enough now. So they already tried to fiddle the language of the payment once, is what I'm going to say. And, and they're now trying to do it again. So the Treasury, apparently, wanted this grant to be counted as a reduction in the energy bill. Now, there is a practical reason for it. And the practical reason being that it would then reduce the inflation figure by a couple of percent. Now, if you can reduce your inflation figure, it means a corresponding saving uh, in terms of servicing the debt, uh, which has been worked out by the Office for Budgetary Responsibility, I gather, of £14 billion. Pounds. Now, I'm not an economist. So there will be subtleties I'm missing, I'm sure. But the money isn't reducing the size of the energy bills. If you give everyone or every household £400, you can say use that for your energy bills, but it's not actually reducing the size of the energy bills. It's not reducing the size of the payments that people need to make. It's effectively a boost to incomes. You're boosting people's incomes. So it would have seemed baffling to me if for the, the Office for National Statistics had agreed with the Treasury that it should be classified as a reduction in those bills and therefore, you know, be taken off the inflation figures. I was surprised enough to see that the Financial Times reporting the decision as, as actually quite a tight one. They actually could have gone either way. The reason given was that the money wouldn't be influencing production decisions and was a flat amount being paid to households. It wasn't at all linked to energy consumption. If you were going to reduce the the uh, energy bills at source, then it would be worth different amounts to different people, wouldn't it? And as an aside, the Office for National Statistics also said it can't be classified as social assistance because everyone's getting it, not just those who need it. You know, that's caused quite a bit of reasonable debate, I think. But on this occasion, I'm not going to actually uh, give the government stick because on the one hand, the essential purpose of public spending like this is to make sure everyone can actually manage. As such, it should be payable, you know, on, from one point of view, payable only to those who could not otherwise manage. That being said, I also understand the political game. Energy bills are a worry for millions of households, not just the most vulnerable be political suicide not to have a largely universal measure in place. There's an argument for not giving it to second households, certainly. Absolutely the case. But I haven't made a massive issue of that either. Again, it's essentially an argument that politicians should do something that might be the right practical decision, but would serve to lose them votes. Any strategy that involves persuading politicians to do something that's going to lose them votes is a total waste of time because the only politicians stupid enough to do it are those who are going to lose the election. You know, it doesn't matter what the policy or how important it may be. Now, don't get me wrong. If there's some fiddle that would allow the government to use their energy payments to reduce the reported inflation figure, I would say go for it. That £14 billion worth of interest that we could save, that could be put to good use. I mean, with the current government, it wouldn't be, but it could be. Although I describe the government's attempts to fiddle the figures, I don't necessarily mean it as a principled objection from me. Economic fiddles, uh, figures are fiddled in some way or other all the time anyway. It's largely um, a man-made construction, isn't it? It's a bit like language. You know, we call a cow a cow. It makes no di If we called it a dungus, it wouldn't change the nature of the cow. You know, but we have to agree, or well, people who speak the same language, we have to agree what a word means. And it's the same thing with, with the economic figures. People have to agree a general platform, but it's still made up. The platform is constructed, it's artificial. But whatever economic model you use, it has to, 
It has to work according to people's understandings. Classifications have to make sense. You can't just keep changing them into what suits you politically. Otherwise, the whole model keeps breaking down and nobody will ever be able to make sensible decisions because you've no idea how the government's going to define certain things in the future. But if the government wants to actually reduce the inflation figure, if that's the aim, if you want to reduce the inflation figure, they can do that. You know, if they want to reduce it in order to save what is actually quite a lot of money on debt servicing, do it. Why not do it? It's not like the government are being frustrated in this goal by bean counters. They've got the tools to go right ahead and reduce inflation at least by a little bit. Instead of issuing money to households directly and trying to get it classified as a discount on energy bills, why not actually use the money to give a discount on energy bills? Again, not an economist, but it strikes me as odd that the government are giving the money to households to help with the bills when they could just reduce the energy cap down and use the money to compensate energy companies for the extra cost of energy that they're having to pay. In fact, it could end up being a better use of the money because the government, in line with Labour's plan, could make sure the money is only used to compensate for the extra wholesale cost of energy, not profits as well. The problem with the £400 to households is that some of it is just going straight into corporate profits. Whereas if the government said, no, 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 you're going to reduce your bills by X amount, X hundreds of pounds, you know, in terms of the average usage, and we will compensate you for your costs, not the profits, your costs, then that £400 per household will stretch further. It also causes problems with the wage negotiations that are going badly wrong for a lot of workers right now. Like, you could argue that the money the government is giving out might reasonably factored into those negotiations. I mean, if the government could be bothered to mediate those negotiations, negotiations that is, but it's not easy to say how much should be factored in. You can't factor in £400 for each worker's wages because it depends how many wage earners are contributing to the household bills. Because each household gets the one payment. It's not per person. And the payment is the same everywhere. Whereas France famously funded a direct reduction in energy bills. That means that their overall inflation figures lower. They did what the government wants to do, reduced inflation, but they did it in the right way, reduced the bills. So they will be paying less to service their debt and workers will not need the eye-watering increases that British workers need and are generally not getting, just to tread water. You know, the more I read into various side issues and the more I think about it, the more I think it's absolute madness not to be actively reducing inflation levels where possible. Especially when it doesn't even come at a particular cost. Obviously, we can be howling at the moon trying to suggest that the Tories... Uh, re completely reallocates their spending priorities, but it with the same amount of money. The money being allocated is the same. It's just how you allocate it. You allocate it in one way, you get a reduction in inflation, which allows you to save money on debt servicing, which gives you more money in your in the coffers, as well as making it easier for workers to get at least close to inflationary pay rises. Because you, to get any, a worker inflationary pay rise. You know, there's two ways. You increase the pay or you reduce inflation. You need them to meet in the middle. If you can reduce inflation, you make it easier. You calm the public down as well because we don't like to see large inflation figures. I mean, inflation is currently over 10%. That's huge. It's likely to rise to 13% next month. In January, it could be 18%. One group thinks it'll be over 20% if the wholesale price of gas doesn't come down again. Quite apart from the practical problems of such high inflation figures, which have cost every government that's delivered them in modern times at the next election. But the government are given a range of choices by officials when it comes to deciding on policy. Ministers say to their officials, this is my policy. Give me options to achieve it. So they come back with practical options within those ministerial boundaries and say, here are your options. Treasury officials will happily give the cabinet a variety of different options to choose from within the guidelines set for them by the Chancellor and the Prime Minister. Why not choose the ones that lower inflation? But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.